Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Kelvin here. So, as most of you might know, recently there's this OCBC scam going around and at least $8.5 million were lost in December due to this scam. Yes, yes, I know some of you from Wall Street Bets are used to seeing these kind of losses. You'd be like, first time? But still, $8.5 million lost to scam is still super duper bad, especially if it's a huge amount, like your entire life savings or your money to buy PTO with your B. So, in this video, I will show you how this scam works. Yes, I will show you how, because you know, I'm something of a programmer myself. Then, I will tell you what to look out so that you, your ama, and even your goldfish can avoid getting scammed in the future. But before that, I would greatly appreciate it if you can help to tap the like button, because it will help out with the channel. In return, I will show you a panda baby sneezing and scaring the mother. Alright, let's start right now. So, recently, scammers were sending SMS to fish for OCBC customer login. But that's nothing new, right? Because phishing scams have been going on since a few million years ago. Like, a while ago, they were targeting UOB's customers. Before that, it was DBS. Other banks were targeted too, so it's not the first time this happened. But some of you will be like, Ayah, just a normal phishing scam. Only old aunties and uncles will get scammed. But no hold. Even a 38-year-old software engineer got scammed. In another report, a 33-year-old ID savvy woman got scammed too. As you can see, this scam is so advanced that even people who are good in IT were able to get scammed. So much so that in just one month alone, over 400 victims were scammed. Okay now, I want to show you how they did the scam as a programmer. The first thing they did was to make the SMS look as though it came from OCBC. Check this out. If you look at the sender, it says OCBC. And the worst part is, the fake SMS can appear in the same thread as previous OCBC SMS. Like you can see here, this person received the one-time password from OCBC. Then the fake SMS appeared next. Some people be like, if it's from OCBC, then it's by OCBC, right? Right? Well, yes, but no, it's not from OCBC. So how is this possible? Actually, it's super easy, barely an inconvenience. When sending SMS through an SMS service, all you need are three fields. What's the body or content you want to send? Where did the SMS came from? And where you want to send the SMS to? Now, normally, the front part needs to come from a real phone number. Like, you cannot fake send from a phone number that doesn't belong to you. For example, if I want to pretend that I'm my Yuka and ask you, Pa Jian Boy, I can't do that because I don't have my Yuka's phone number. So, in the SMS service, I'll first need to buy a phone number from their list. The number can be from any country. I can even look for a Singapore number and just pay $7 every month to own it. But it still doesn't explain why they were able to make it look like OCBC sent it. So, here's how. There's something called alphanumeric sender ID. For example, I own this phone number. All I need to do is just give this phone number a name, for example, UOB. Then all I need is just a few lines of code, change the from field to UOB, then type the message, like go to fakeuob.com to what big big. Then I run the program. And tada, I got an SMS that looks like it came from UOB. You can see that all my previous SMS are one-time passwords by UOB. So that's how easy it is to send fake SMS. Like I can also make it as though my sergeant's ama sent me a message. I can run faster than you law. So that's the first part, fake SMS. By itself, it's not enough to scam people. So here comes the second part, fake link. Sometimes you can instantly tell whether a link is fake or not. Like if the link says bitly.com slash blah blah blah. Once you see it, you'll be like, ah, that's a fake link. But sometimes the link has the bank name in it. For example, ocbcalerts.com or securitydbs.com or HSBC secure logins payment alerts.com. Probably you are like this guy, evidently not a savvy individual. At this point, you deserve it if you got conned by phone scammers. But the thing is, it is actually not easy to spot fake links, especially if you are not paying attention. Maybe you have been OTing until 11 p.m. and you are super tired, then you receive this SMS. The only thing that you will see is that your account transaction has been suspended. You might not even notice that it's a fake link. So don't be so judgmental when people fall for these kind of scams. By the way, it's also super cheap to buy domain names. Like if I want to buy fakelinkdbs.com or scamlinkuob.com, it only costs like $7.98 a year to get. So that's the second part, fake links. But now here comes the third part, fake website. So this is the fake website and this is the real website. They look the same, right? It's same same but different. One belongs to ocbcalerts.com, another belongs to OCBC. If you enter all your login details into the fake website, oh, all your savings be like, I don't feel so good Mr. Stark and the scammers will steal all your money. 
And again, it's super easy to fake a website. All you need is just one line of code to download the website and use it to scam people. So yeah, when the scammers combine all of these things together, it's no wonder that many people fell for it. But what's the solution to all this? Maybe some of you will be like, since OCBC got scammed, maybe I changed to another bank? But like I showed you earlier, the scammers can target any bank that they want. So even if you run to another bank, the scammers will be like, where's Johnny? Then come and continue scamming you. So changing bank is a bad solution. What about instead of sending OTP via SMS, they can send via email? Eh, that's even worse. Let me show you why. A while ago, I got this email that claims they are from M1. They say they can refund my bill. But if you click on this drop down, you can see that it's actually not by M1. This is super easy to do as a programmer. On top of that, the link doesn't even show you where you are going. Even if it shows you, the link can be fake. Here's how. Let's say I have a link that goes to google.com. I can actually change the address to go to maybe fakegoogle.com. And if it's on the phone, you won't be able to tell if it's a fake link or not until you click on it. So sending email is also not a good solution either. Okay, if you remember earlier, I showed that you can set the sender name to any name that you want. But here's the thing, while not every country support alphanumeric sender ID, Singapore allows it. There's an article by Captain Singhi, and he showed exactly this problem. I'll leave his article down below if you are interested. His solution to this is to petition for the government to ban alphanumeric sender ID. I also saw a Straits Times article asking to protect SMS sender ID. Basically, if the organization registered their SMS sender ID, and if there's any unauthorized use of this sender ID, the messages will be blocked. I think all these are good ideas, but they are not 100% foolproof because scammers can still use some Singapore number and people will still think that it's a real SMS. However, with that being said, I think these methods still help to prevent some people from getting scammed. Got to? Better than no do. But here's the main thing, SMS by itself is not secure at all because there's something called SIM jacking, where people can hijack your phone number and receive all of your SMS. So even if you're not easily scammed, as long as the hackers have your phone number and login details, oh, your account will never be safe. By the way, all this kind of info get leaked all the time. Just last week, all these customer info like name, mobile number, date of birth were leaked. Before that, it was Starhub, then it was MyRepublic. And even if you don't use them, you still use other platforms, right? Maybe they are leaked too? There's a way to find out. You can check using a website called Have I Been Pawn. For example, if I check my email, I can see that a lot of my platforms were hacked and my login details were actually leaked. So that's why you shouldn't use the same password for all your logins. Anyway, like I said, it's possible the hackers have access to your phone numbers. So SMS is not a secure way to receive your one-time password. So here comes another solution, using software-based authenticator like Google Authenticator or OT. Most of the crypto platforms like Celsius, CoinHacker use this instead of SMS because they can't be hijacked. But to be fair, most Singapore banks already use software-based authenticator like DBS has their digital token or OCBC has one token. But all of them allow you to receive OTP via SMS. So as long as SMS is available, scammers will always be able to use SMS to log in. Then you'll be like, wow, like this also cannot, like that also cannot, GG lock. I believe there's only one real solution to all of this, and that is on self, check on self. So whenever you access any sensitive website, not just bank website, but any website that needs you to log in, always, always check the domain name. Okay, maybe you have a super duper long link and you don't know how to check. It's actually super easy. Let me show you how. Trust me, I'm a programmer. In any link, there's always two main parts. The top level domain, like .com, .org. Then they will have the second level domain, like HubSpot or DBS or Google. This will be the two main parts. And these are the only thing that you will need to check. There will be other parts of the address, like HTTP, subdomain, path. Those are not important. You only need to check the second level domain and top level domain. For example, if it's the fruit company, Apple, then the link will be apple.com. Even if it's a super duper long link, the two main parts are still apple.com. Similarly, if it's OCBC, then it will always be ocbc.com. So simple. Then if you see ocbcalert.com, oh, it's a fake link. So that's how to check for links. Now you know how this scam works and how to avoid it. Hopefully, you won't be scammed anymore, yeah? Anyway, do you know of any other solutions to avoid getting scammed? Let me know down below. Like, share, and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.